What's up boys, back out here. I uh, got a little bit of explaining to do. This video was going to be getting the rear subframe all dialed in and then getting the engine bay ready for the engine. But all that footage is, it's ruined. I, I don't even understand what happened. I got like three days of footage doing that rear subframe and parking brakes and hooking all that stuff up. And every time I upload it, it sounds like I'm underwater. So I don't know if the SD card got corrupted or what. We're just gonna start here with me hooking up the AEM boost controller to the ECU. So if you don't know, the AEM boost controller, I might throw up a picture right now, comes with this really cool gauge, right? Right here. It comes with these two buttons and you can change the boost and all this cool stuff, which is sick. It's really cool. I wanted to keep it like that, but I'd rather have it hooked up to the AEM ECU so I can control it from there and the ECU can do like boost by gear, and it can see the boost and it's just safer and it's easier and you can just do a whole bunch of more stuff with it that way so i'm just going to jump to that footage and uh, show you how to do that without uh, having like your stock boost solenoid and all that stuff it was there's no diagrams online anywhere to figure out where to hook it up at on the other side of that plug so there is diagrams i might even throw up a picture right now of it to show you where to hook it up if you have that whole bracket with like your boost solenoids and your EGR stuff, whatever that other jazz is that's supposed to be there. Well, my car didn't even come with that and I couldn't find diagrams anywhere on which wires it would be from the main harness because they're different colors. So I'll walk you through how to do that right now. And then once that's over, I'll bring you back and I'll explain how I got the rear subframe all in line and everything close enough. I still gotta take it to an alignment shop, but all right what's up boys back out here i honestly don't know if this is a new video or not this might actually just be the same video of me getting this ready to get the engine in if it is a new video what's up i got to uh i have to hook up this boost solenoid to the ecu i've talked about it multiple times it's one of these wires and this usually goes over here and it plugs into like your boost solenoids and there's another bracket right there. I might throw a picture right now. Adrian's got a stock car. He's just going to take that whole bracket off and bring it over so I can chase these wires and figure out which ones go to the boost solenoid. They're not the same color. They switch colors at this plug. You look at the pictures, it's like a white and a blue and a, uh, a brown. There's no white. There's no just blue. There's a blue and a red. And there's definitely no brown. Okay, while well, I'm waiting for Adrian to bring that bracket over, I'm gonna take this oil cooler out because I want to drain it. And I also uh, want to remake these uh, AN lines because I think they're leaking. I think it's just these cheap Chinese fittings. I talked about it before. I just I, This is just the Amazon oil cooler because I figured oil cooler is a cooler, but the fittings are just garbage. They're so soft, they're so cheaply made. So let's get that out. You just gotta bust all these loose. So it's not like I had blew anything up. I shouldn't have any metal shavings. So I'm just gonna let this dry so it doesn't use any old oil in it, but it should be all right. I'm gonna do an oil change after like 20 minutes of runtime anyways. All right, here's the bracket. This is your uh, boost solenoid, boost controller, whatever you wanna call it, OEM. It's gonna be this white and this black. This black is probably just a ground. I'm probably already tied into this somewhere, but this white one I'm pretty sure is a signal. And you can see it comes all the way over and it's the second one in. So if we plug this in, it should be the second one in on the back bank. So right here, if you change these wires from this, it's that black and that white. You come up and over, it's the second one's in. You see those green and blue? It's not those ones, it's that white and that black one. So it'll be the second one's in once you plug it into the car and polarity doesn't matter. So once you plug it into the car, they all switch. You got two green ones on the end. Then you got this red. They're both red. Yes, yeah, so there's two reds. It's a red and yellow, and then a solid red. I want to try to leave this plug in case I ever have to get anything else off of it. All right, so I'm going to strip all this gray off, and then I'm going to cut these wires back here somewhere probably. Okay, once again, I'm just a freak, and I can't leave anything alone. I don't want this to just be like dangling down there. All he'll be like. Technically, you could just pin this. You could put your wire in there and your wire in there and be good to go. But 
I want to cut these way up there, then hide this up behind this wire loom so you don't even see this plug. I want to keep this plug in case I ever need it for anything. I mean, I guess I could cut them all off with extra wire on there and then put this somewhere. But then I gotta worry about the other wires grounding out for no reason on something. All right, it's these two red ones. I'm gonna cut these. That red one and then a red with a yellow. So if you're trying to do this, you don't have to like go through all this. You can just get your red with yellow and your red from here and run it to your boost controller. Okay, I cut them. No going back now. Here's my boost controller that I have running to that gauge. I just gotta disconnect it here and connect it to there. All right, I'm putting the heat shrink on these too. I was going to put clips, like a male and a female, so they could plug in and out. I don't know. If this goes bad, I'll just cut it. How often do boost solenoids go bad? It's not like something that you replace every other oil change or something. I didn't really do a good job of explaining this. Put your uh, heat shrink on before you crimp your last crimp thing. Uh, try not to melt through your wires. Okay, if you're going to use a heat gun, make sure they're both all the way up to where you want them. Because you're not going to be able just to just heat one up at one time. Okay, now I gotta be a freak and get everything hidden back up to where it needs to be so you can't see any of this. Get your wire loom on. This can go up there and be zip tied into there. This will all go back behind it so you can't see any of this. Okay, let me get some zip ties. I'll bring you right back and show you how I got this. It's not gonna look like this. I'm gonna tuck all this. This is ridiculous. I ended up disconnecting it again off camera because I wanted it all ran behind these ones. I ran just straight down like an idiot. So I actually redid everything again. But there you go. Heat shrinked. Got everything zip tied up. Once the battery and everything's in, you won't see any of these. These will all be tucked up in a way. All you'll see is this wire loom for like three inches. But there you go. I got it all behind all that. Down there, I took this off. And I got it zip tied to this ground. So it's down here. You don't see this. Yes, I know there's a bracket. I could mount it up here and be all fancy or something. I just don't want to. I don't want to see anything. I want this as clean as possible in here. All right, boys. Well, that's how you hook up your uh, AEM boost controller to your AEM ECU. Now, back here, and this really does suck that I lost all this footage because this would have been a great learn from my mistakes thing. Because I think I did everything twice, if not three times back here. Like, what you want to do in your head is like line these up with like the factory ones, right? So like here's a factory one. Like you want to just line these up with a factory one. And I did that and everything was okay. But then when I went to hook up the sway bar, you can make so much adjustment on this that the sway bar hole never lined up. So I ended up having to line the sway bar up then count the threads, like I put paint marker on the nuts, and I counted the threads to get that perfect. So that, that's how I did the lower ones. The upper ones, I had no reference of like starting point. Because this car, I never had the factory ones. This car came with those tubes and it was never right. So on the top, I just made the ball joints on each side, both two threads out. And then I made that middle right there in between those two outer nuts exactly one inch. And that put my that put my wheel pretty close and with toe. Even when it's on the ground. It's free. It's still gonna have to go to the alignment shop, but at least like the car could drive there now, you know what I mean? And then these, I don't remember exactly, I think it's three threads. Cause I did line these up with the stock rubber bushing. It's just kind of hard to do to make them exactly the same with that. So I got it real close to that stock rubber bushing and then I think I actually made it one thread longer because you still have your like camber bolts back here. You can still adjust. So you still got play to move this in and out which would be your toe, right? So there's everything I did back here. All this is all torqued down. Everything's ready to go. You can look up the torque specs on these. I don't remember them off the top of my head. Everything's torqued to spec. I do not have cotter keys in. Before one of you guys say something, I need to get thicker washers. When those are torqued down, the spec, 
the cotter key hole is actually above the castle nut. So even if I put a pin in there, it wouldn't do anything. Oh yeah, these uh, parking brakes are not fun. I mean, I think I did a video on them a long time ago. It's probably horrible quality, horrible editing. If you really need to know how to do it, you might be able to go back and find that, but it's just two shoes, a, a bunch of springs, a couple brackets. You pretty much have to have like six arms to do it by yourself. It's not fun, but everything's ready for the engine. If you uh, made this far, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe if you're not subscribed. I'm super excited, boys. This thing's ready to go in there. Gotta put the clutch on and the transmission on. I'm gonna leave all my brackets off the front, all the pulleys and everything, because that'll give you more room to work and not have to worry about scratching stuff. Yeah, I'm super pumped, man. This thing's gonna be in there any day now. I, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Honestly, I don't know when it's gonna be because of Christmas and everything. I don't think it's gonna be this Sunday. It'll be next week sometime for sure. Maybe I'll try to get one out for you guys Tuesday and then get back on schedule. All right, boys. See ya.